point where when the moon wakes you up, it shows you, the moon is going to wake you up even if, you're, if your eyes are so sewn shut. It doesn't matter. Pain only comes when you're not prepared properly or not working hard enough to cleanse yourself of the things you hate about yourself and not hate. Cleanse yourself of the things that let you down. So if you're prepared for it, you can you can tackle these things in a systemic way. And that's extreme adherence to spiritual purification. So no matter what, the moon is going to, it's going to show you, uh, maybe perhaps the moon can show you what is most disappointing about yourself. And when that happens, you can get real disappointed. As long as you are, uh, you know, concerned with the soul. And when it happens enough, you know yourself enough to where you know what you're going to be hit with the next time. You actually know it. You actually know what's on deck. The moon will waterboard you. The moon waterboards. That's, that's the problem. But the problem isn't the moon, the problem is you. How does the moon affect your reality, Nathrakis? How does the moon affect the tides? How does the moon affect water? How does the moon affect water in the ocean? Does the moon affect water in your body? If, you're, if your body is 75, 78, whatever percent water? It's irrefutable. But see, it's not, this is, this is irrefutable. Lunatics, the cops saying that in full moons, crime rising during full, like this is not something that is a joke or is speculation. I'm telling you that when you get to a certain point in your, in your world, when you are trying to know yourself, when you are trying to know yourself, you can't hide from yourself. And when it's time to know yourself more, it's by force. And you are waterboarding. Unless you are continually, diligently doing the spiritual work. When you know what's coming next, you are perhaps beginning to know your true self. I mean, there's the, there's the moon, there's the sky. They're all one. Not all one, but many of them are the same. Think of how many times, I mean, if you're a you're a creative individual or you're a sensitive individual how many times you couldn't sleep thoughts that you desperately had to work out in your mind i must be crazy why is it like this tonight why it's not because you're crazy it's because the freaking moon is waterboarding you and you don't know it think of all the things that you don't know that are waterboarding wa waterboarding you we well, actually don't don't think too much about it i just cannot stress it enough you got tides in your body, hell yeah, belly, hell yeah, man. I mean, you know, you remember, I mean, you don't forget. If you have no choice but to know yourself, you don't forget those times. What are things that drive the tide outside of the moon? Not even sure the moon is what they tell us? Uh, what do you want me to say to that? I mean, dude, the sun right now could be a subverted artificial power source right now with the real sun behind a fucking, behind a, a screen. You wouldn't know. How would you be able to distinguish between the light, uh, the artificial light of Lucifer and the light of, uh, of, a, of a primary creator? Can you tell the difference? With your eyes? Can you tell the difference? No, you cannot tell the difference with your eyes. Your eyes are crippled. We all know that Lucifer is the lord of light and air. What is out there in the light and the air? You have no idea what it really is. But the moon does some things to you that they're not voluntary. It is not voluntary the things you have to, to to know yourself it's a capacity that not many focus on and without a certain element of fortitude in that sometimes you can think illogically sometimes you can feel illogically sometimes you can act illogically if one wants to wants to know your oneself you need to be very keen on on those uh, occurrences on those situations and there comes a point when you're committed to getting to your best life. And I know that sounds insane. But when you're committed to it, and when you're confronted with an opportunity to know yourself deeper and to prevent any more illogic, you have no choice but to go all the way, no matter how it makes you feel. You have no choice. But it's just, it's just that quest of knowing yourself is, um, it just depends what kind of a person you are. It just depends on how you deal with disappointment. The point is, you, you cannot run, you cannot hide, you cannot medicate, you cannot disappear that knowing. You can't. And it gets to a point where it is a spiritual battle in that if you rely on the way you feel, 
and you rely on the way you think, you're screwed. There is another energy. There is another intelligence. There is something outside of this, the diseased brain. It wasn't by choice. The diseased brain of the individual in, in, in a diseased society. Your mind will be relatively a product of the disease of the society. There's only so far you can go when your thinking and feeling is under assault by spiritual weapons. When you're under assault by spiritual weapons, your mind and feelings are shattered and you can't rely on them. You have to rely on something that is, not something that changes, not something that's in flux like the mind, not something that can be taken or led or baffled. But it goes, it goes around the other way too. The diseased soul will make the mind and the heart sick too. I mean, it's more than one way to look at these things. It's an articulation of what you've been feeling for a bit. Oh uh, yeah, uh, everything I say is an articulation of what I've been trying to articulate for my whole life. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, you'd be you'd be insane to think that any any rants on here are crazy. You'd be you'd be literally a dead man to think that. So there's just something about that. When you're looking to cleanse something, how do you cleanse the way you think? How do you cleanse the way you feel? So it seems the best place to start is for with going with the soul. And this goes back to what I was saying. When you know the system, it's written on your heart. When you see the systems and you manipulate your own, it's written on the soul. You want things written on your soul, your heart can be shattered, your mind can be shattered. But the soul is eternal. It is, a, it is from a different piece. It is from something different and it is bound. It is connected to something that is not tainted. You know like the source in uh, Wheel of Time, how on the way out, Shaitan, on the way out in his banishment, ejaculated his insanity and poison into the force, or the creation energy that people who harness the spiritual powers tap into, the source. And on that exit, upon being banished, sabotaged the source with his own insanity. So then, all the people that are trying to do good with the source there, and trying to heal the world, are inevitably driven insane by the madness of the blind god on his way out. Here, there is no such thing. The taint is in the mind and in the heart. It's not in the soul. You're not born with it in the soul. But that taint is our taint, but it's in our minds and in our hearts. But the soul is not part of the playground or the battleground. I mean, it is part of the battleground, but I'm saying that is the only thing that matters in the battleground, it is, it is the soul. It's being fought for because it's not inherently tainted. It needs permission to be tainted. Something to consider about all this. What taints the soul, Casper? What taints the soul is having an opportunity or knowing that you need to get into your best life, but still saying, or and actually really running and hiding from it. That's what taints the soul. That's what puts the soul to sleep. And that's what corrupts everything irreparably. I was saying you can't run, you can't hide, you can't disappear. What you need to know about yourself, you can though. But when you do, you die. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about the second death. When you do, you die twice. So it's, it's an important distinction of those pieces of your, of yourself. And I, I don't pretend to know all the pieces, but there's the mind, there's the heart, there's the energy, there's the toroidal fields. There's the, there's the magnetic fields, if magnetism is even really a thing, as it stands defined before us now. You know, like, why gravity? Why magnets? Why? Oh, because, oh, huh, just natural laws. There are energy fields. And you know, some say it comes from the brain, some say it comes straight out of the heart. The heart rings true. When you can alleviate tension or you can strengthen communication or relationship by, by hugging, you know it has, you know that the heart is what deals with your energy field pretty clear. But anyway, soul work. I mean, we all know the Bible, right? It's not flesh and blood or whatever the hell. It's principalities in a spiritually wicked realm. It's not even things that you can see. But who would believe that? It's only been written for thousands of years. It's only been in your face for thousands of years. It's always in your face. It's always in, it's always your choice. It's been in your face forever. There's nothing that's hidden. There's nothing that's hidden right now. Even the craziest, wildest truths are out there. Mixed with so many untruths, it renders all of them meaningless. The heart can be bad as well. The scripture tells us not to follow it blindly. There you go, Gus. 
Very, very good. There it is. Like I was saying too, the heart can be poisoned easily. The mind can be poisoned easily, but the soul, it requires a different degradation. Spiritual armor, Smelly? We've spoken a little bit about a sort of an armor, but there is armor. There is armor. And I've read, I've read some stuff, texts on spiritual wickedness and fortifying yourself against spiritual wickedness. And I know there are certainly things, I mean, I had to stop reading it. I was going to puke. Uh, I, could, I could not be reading that. That book was making me insane. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even mention what it is. There you go. Reneth with another one of those reminders. You have a heart of gold. Don't let them take it from you. Yes. So the only lesson when it comes to that sort of magic is don't, you don't have to believe it. Just know that they do. You don't have to believe that the world is this or the world is that or that this is that or you couldn't you couldn't imagine that people would subscribe to certain I don't know mystery religions it doesn't matter what you think it doesn't matter what you believe just know that they believe it that's all you think they're stupid for thousands and thousands and thousands of years the same control structure you think they're stupid there are many ways to know yourself those ways are an initiation they actually are they are of a spiritual I don't know if I want to say religious nature. I actually don't want to say religious nature. Um, because there's no such... What do you want to say about religion? That hasn't already been said 15 million times. It's just like I've been saying. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what's in your face. People are not going to believe it. What else are you going to do? There is nothing to hide. Because the, th the things that are out in the open, no one would believe. You don't need to hide things. There is no hiding. The hiding is in volume. If you have things out in the open, sure, that's a problem. If you have a million things out in the open, unassailable octopus. Now you see, the last place anyone looks is right in front of them, Black Dak, you're right. The last place people look is right in front of them. The even laster place that people look is inside of them. You cannot have anything good come out of you if you've gone bad. Sure, there can be certain things of quality, but net negative, it will be something else.